Okay, you guys. Oh my gosh. I'm so dang excited for the Zoom tonight. Um, I messaged her about a week ago and I was like, all right, let's team up. Let's talk about a Zoom because I know we kind of both had like a comeback. So um, I am super, super, super excited to hear what she has to say. And I hope you guys can take a lot from what we both have to say together. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Courtney Wazolowski. I'm a double diamond. Um, I've been in the business for just over three years. I'm from Wisconsin, live in North Carolina now. Um, long story short, I had been with another company before, got to the top and saw the company was crap. Um, I ended up leaving that company with $15,000 of debt. I'm now debt free because of this business. Um, but fun fact, I didn't do basically anything in the business for almost two years when I started. Um, and then it kind of just hit me that I was like, well, this is what I'm going to do. So I went from zero to double diamond in eight months. So that is a little bit about me. Um, I talk really fast. I'm a really hard read. If I offend you, I'm so, so sorry. I'm really not trying to, but it's very possible if you're yellow. So um, Francesca, if you want to share a little bit about your story and then hop right into whatever it is you want to talk about, um, and we will just piggyback off each other as we go. Awesome. Well, I'm super excited to do this too. Um, talking about my comeback um, and just comebacks in general is like one of my favorite things, just because I think so many people go through it, you know, um, start off really excited about the business or even don't do anything with the business for a while and kind of jump in whatever way you kind of do it. There's always a feeling at some point in your business, like, Hmm, something is wrong. Something has fallen off my paycheck is different. This is kind of scaring me. Like, what do I do? So just to kind of give you guys a little bit of a backstory on me, um, I've been in the business for a about two and a half years now. I joined at like end of December of 2017. And, um, so really didn't get started until like January. I went, um, down. Francesca, you froze. Super quickly. Um, am I? Yeah, you're. Am I good? You're better now. So okay. So. We heard I went and then it, it froze. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so I went ruby in nine days. I went diamond in, I think, like. 30 days. And then I went double diamond in like 54 days or something like that. So I took off running. I crushed it. It was like literally insane. I earned $40,000 of bonuses in my first two months in the business. And I was like, woohoo, I'm not going to have to ever work again. I'm just going to sit back and my team's going to do the work and it's going to be great. And then I realized that's not how this works. <laughs> that, that's not about, um, I was not leading from a place of really wanting to, it's not that I didn't want my team to be succeed to succeed but I literally was just like this is great like you know my volume super high you know they're gonna they're gonna you know get me through you know I'm gonna take a little break sorry my daughter's saying hi okay <laughs> so um that was a really big um reality check for me um after that um you know it all happened so quickly um that I didn't really know what to do next um I know, I know. Sorry, guys. <laughs> She's like, I want attention. She's, She's like, like, let me say hi to everyone. <laughs> so um, basically, um, I, lo I ended up losing double diamond about six months after I promoted. Um, and then I sat a diamond for a few months and then I lost diamond and then I just gave up. I was like, you know what? you know, I, this, that, and the other excuse, my team, like my, the diamond that I went diamond, uh, that I went double with quit the emerald quit. Everyone quit. I like, I literally didn't have a single person working on my team. And I was just like, what do I do? Like what just happened? Like, this is crazy. I went from checks that were like my, my third check was like $6,000 to like not even being commission qualified. In fact, I think a year ago, I owed $6. Okay. So like I fell all the way off and I kind of just woke up one day and I was like, what am I doing? Like I literally made so much money my first like six to eight months in this business. I was working a full-time job. I was finishing my degree. I have a family, everything like that. Like what, what changed, you know? And so that's when I started to do host to post. 
Um, I started seeing that on the page. I jumped back in and I think we were doing $20 promos. Um, and so that's kind of what got me to jump back in. I was like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to earn a lot of fast starts, you know, everything like that. And um, so I jumped in and I just started doing host to post like crazy, which I'll kind of get into how I do it because that's primarily how I was able to regain my rank. So I worked really hard um, and I built, um, I charted myself triple. I want to say um, I started working again um, last August and I charted myself triple by January with like like brand new chart, like everyone was dead. Of course, at that point we had gotten the new chart, so it took less people as well, but I signed over a hundred new distributors. Um, some of that was a $20 promo, $50 promo. Some of that was just regular. Um, a lot of it was from host to post. And I'll also talk to you just a little bit about um, how I've been having some success signing distributors, even from not doing that. But um, essentially what I did is I just messaged every single person. If you were active on my messenger list, I went and I sent you a message asking for you to host a post for me. And I did that for hours. Every single day when I got home from work, I would spend four to five hours and just grind and grind and grind and grind. Um, and then I earned the um, $600 um, LC bonus. Um, and that really helped to kind of boost my check, even though I wasn't, hadn't re-ranked yet. Um, and then eventually I did re-rank in January, which was really awesome. So um, basically when it comes to host to post, what really has worked for me is one, I go into my actives, I see who's active and I, it, it really depends on what your schedule is for me. I find the best time to do it is kind of in the afternoon and evening um, to get them up. Um, and I will just message basically just a really short message. Hey, feel free to say no, but um, I'm going for a really big promotion. And I was wondering if you could just help me out by um, posting on your page. I do giveaways. So I will always mention that as well. You know, I'm doing a giveaway. You can do you can be entered into the giveaway and, you know, to post. And a lot of people have said yes. You know, some people have felt a little uncomfortable, like it's cold messaging. To me, I was like, I, I'm just going to bust through that barrier because I don't, have, I don't have time to sit here and just wait for people to message me. Of course, I'm posting on my page. I use stories a lot. That does get me a decent amount of sales. But we're looking at that 40, 50, 60 low customers a month, which is what I was really going for. Post to post completely changed the game for me. So what I would do um, is I would, when once they said yes, I would send them the post and then I would include a picture. So if I was doing hair, skin, and nails, I would include like a picture of someone with like really nice long hair. Or if I was doing keto coffee, I would include like a nice aesthetically pleasing photo of coffee. Um, and I have scripts for everything, which I don't mind, um, you know, sharing somehow, but I have scripts for like everything I do. Everything is... In my, I have an iPhone, so for those of you that have iPhones that can use the, um, the keyboard um, you know, to input um, your script. So I do everything really, really quickly because I'm always moving so fast. So I have scripts for all these different products. I post results in the comments. Um, and then what I do from there is go ahead and message everybody that um, comments. Now, if someone wants to buy, great. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get their information and I'm going to text them a direct link to a cart using the it works app. So, um, if they want keto coffee, I will put in two bags of keto coffee and send them that car with instructions. If they want to delete one out because they don't want to pay the 72 a month and they can only afford the 39, that's fine. But that's how I upsell is I just add more things to the cart. And then I'm like, if you want to go ahead and delete this, that's fine. And a lot of people don't. So, that's been really helpful for me too. Um, and so then what I will do is if they go ahead and order or they're planning on ordering later, I will still ask them to then host a post for me too. So every single person that I make contact with, whether they say, no, I can't afford it, or yes, I'm buying, or yes, I'm buying later, I'm saying, okay, would you mind posting for me? And so with that, when you're doing that many, that's how I, I was getting up, or do I do usually get up about 30 to 40 a day, which typically will equal anywhere from 40 to 60 little customers a month. That's kind of where I found the sweet spot to be. Now, there's some days where I can't get up that many and I just have to kind of make up for it on other days, but that's what I found has worked for me a lot. 
Um, people that host a post do really well, their host a post is popping. They got 10 comments on it, five comments on it. I will message them and be like, Hey, your post is doing really well. Have you considered doing what I'm, what I do? And then some people are like, well, what is it that you do? And I'll go in and I'll explain it. And especially during promo, I use the host to post to say, Oh my gosh, your post is doing really well. I don't care if they got like two comments on it. Hey, it's only 50 bucks to join, you know, whatever the case may be. So that's another way that I've been kind of using it to get loyal customers and distributors. I find a lot of times too, when you ask someone to host a post, they become interested. They're like, oh, they post it and they're like, oh, well, I'm interested. What is this? And I've signed loyal customers that way too. So I found it to be a really useful tool. Um, a couple things that I will note is the Facebook algorithm really hates host to post. Um, and it's very frustrating. I will say that even now, um, in the last year that I've been doing it, it's become much harder, which is frustrating because a year ago it was like crazy popping off and now it's like a little bit more difficult. So there are some changes that I recommend people make. One being um, any posts that say weight loss, um, pounds, anything like that, Facebook typically will flag. So what I do is I space out the letters. So I'll write like if, for my, if my post is skinny coffee or the keto coffee, I'll put um, weight loss, but I space out each letter, if that makes sense. So Facebook doesn't pick up on it. And I found, um, I did like a little experiment to see, cause I wasn't getting any comments on my keto coffee host to post, which is like usually my best one. And when I changed that all of a sudden I got like a ton of comments on it. So I do think that it really makes a difference. You want to be switching up your wording and your emojis every now and then you want to be switching up the picture that you use. Cause Facebook does pick up on all of that. It's kind of annoying, but it's just something that, you know, if it's, it's starting to not work for you, then either a, you're not getting enough up because before you can say host to post doesn't work for me, you better be doing it every single day for hours, getting 20 to 30 up for a while before you can really say it doesn't work. Um, and secondly, change your wording a little bit. Um, and you know, change up the emojis, um, and change up the picture. Um, there's tons of pictures on Pinterest. I'll go in and I'll switch out lots of really cute aesthetic, you know, hair or coffee pictures that can be used. Um, so just, I try and switch that up like every couple of weeks, the pictures that I'm using, and then I'll switch up the wording usually every month. But I just started doing that spacing out of those kind of, or comment below. Um, I will space that out too. And I've noticed a really big, um, that's been really helpful. So there's lots of ways that you can kind of get around, um, Facebook kind of flagging that as an ad. Um, so so yeah, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, oh, reminders. So let's say you have someone who um, wants to order from you. What I found to be really useful, um, but they can't afford it that day, you know, they want to order on payday. I go into the, you know, messenger um, chat and there's like a little, um, some little dots on like the left-hand side and you can add a reminder. So every person that says they want to order, Hey, I'm ready to order on Friday. I'll go in, I'll add a reminder for them to order. Then I'll ask them for their number and then I'll ask them to host a post. So that way my phone is constantly giving me notifications that so-and-so wants to order because I used to write it all down on paper and I'm way too much of a mess and I will forget and I will not follow up with people because there's just so many people that I'm talking to. Like I always say, if you can count the number of PLCs that you have, you're not doing your job. You should not be able to count. You should literally have hundreds and I do all the time. So you want to be setting reminders. Hey, okay, you're not sure you can afford it now. When's a good time to follow up? Set a reminder. That's showing them that you're serious about this, that this is something that is important to you, that you, you value um, what you have to offer. Um, and it's also going to be helpful for you because you're just going to get it pop up on your phone and they're going to get it popped up on their phone that it's time to order. And usually what I'll do is I'll shoot them a text of like a funny GIF or something like that. Like just ask them if they're ready and then I will text them the information to order. Not everyone will follow through with it, but I have found a higher percentage of people following through when I'm adding those reminders. Um, and then I'll just kind of be going through my texts usually, um, once a week and just following up with all the people who said they were planning on ordering and, you know, didn't for whatever reason. So, um, last thing I want to add is another way that I've been signing distributors with this new promo. 
Um, I was never a mass distributor enroller. Like I was always a mass low customer enroller and I had a really hard time signing distributors for a really, really long time. And it took really me breaking out of my comfort zone and just asking the question instead of always waiting to be asked that really changed it for me. So what I will do is I will put up a story and maybe I'll have, you know, five to 10 pictures of, you know, me and here's my story and this is what it's, you know, working on social media and here's a picture of a, you know, fast start check or whatever it is, you know, it's, you know, there's, you can find them on Pinterest too. Um, and I will leave that up for a couple hours and then I will go all the way to the end. So that means that that person, because Facebook will show you who viewed it, what person, what people went through and actually clicked through every single one, because some people are going to see it and they're going to click off. So I don't need to necessarily message all those people. The people that I'm targeting are the people that went through and took the time to read every single one of those five to 10 pictures that I posted about joining. Um, and so I don't know if I can, if I'll, I'm going to try and show you guys what I'm talking about, because if you do it through the messenger app, it's not going to look the same, but it's probably not even going to work. Hold on. Let me see if I can turn. Okay. There, I think you might be able to see it better. Okay. So this is my Facebook. So, um, I look through my, um, my stories on my page versus looking through it in the messenger app. And the reason for that so I have my story up right now um, for joining, right? Okay. And so what I'll do is I'll click here, I swipe up, and then next to every person, you can click message, okay? So every single person who's viewed that, I'm going to go ahead and message them. And it'll just pop up a little message box and I'll go ahead and I'll send him a message like, Hey, I saw that you viewed my story. Um, you know, it's only $49 to sign up right now. I'd love to give you some info. What do you think? Something like that. Um, just short to the point. And then you can literally just go back and message and message and message and message and message and message. And it makes it super quick and easy because it's all right there. Um, and I'll just sit there and do that for like an hour. <laughs> And I have signed probably like 10 distributors in the last week doing that. So that's just like another tip that I would have not thought about in the past. I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to cold message people. And to an extent, I'm not really much of a cold messenger. I don't, and if you are, that's fine. I don't typically like message people and say, hey, do you, you know, do you want to order this product? But I look at it more as a warm message because those people have already taken the time to view my story. They've already taken the time to go through every single picture and see what I was talking about. So to me, that's not really a cold message um, either. That's, that's really more of kind of a, a warm message and people tend to respond a lot better to it. So anyway, I hope I didn't talk too fast. I'm also red, so I go like, woo, super fast. But um, I hope some of that was helpful. Oh my gosh, it was so, so helpful. And you guys, seriously, like the chat is blowing up. Everyone's like, oh my God, this is gold. My phone is blowing up. But something that just came to my mind, and I'm the same way with you about messaging people that see my story. Um, I just, it just hit me. If you're at the mall and you walk into a store, whether you have any intent to purchase or not, you walk in to look at something, you're going to be greeted and say, hey, do you need help with anything? Can I help you find anything? That's all we're doing with our stories. They're looking at them. It's not like, Hey, I've never talked to you. You've never put any sort of interaction with me. They checked out our stories. We're just being a friendly person being like, Hey, I saw you looked at it. Do you have any questions? Is this something you're interested? When you walk into Sephora and people ask you if you need help with anything, you're not offended. They're just doing their job. That's all we're doing. So, oh my gosh, that was seriously gold. like gold. I took so many notes. It was wonderful. You guys, I told a couple of you that I know are yellows. I was like, you might be offended because Francesca and I know we're both reds. We're going to just like hit you where it hurts if we need to. Um, and just really like speak it all, speak it all. So I first want to talk about people ask me all the time, how are master role distributors? Um, my first thing is take off that like verbiage of, oh, mass enroll, because you are not a mass enroller. All you're doing it's just showing people how to do the business. And because you believe in what the business can do, you're just helping them. Um, I have, I wrote out five tips that I feel like have helped me sign and sign distributors and help them as much as I can. Um, 
My number one thing is I share either my journey or someone else's journey multiple times a day, every single day without fail. Um, second, I'm not afraid to get vulnerable and talk about what my life was like before the business. I'm not afraid to tell people that I was $15,000 in debt. I'm not afraid to tell people that I failed in another company. I'm not afraid to tell people the hard times that I couldn't afford to go buy coffee because people can relate to that. People can't relate to, oh, I'm a double diamond averaging $5,000 a month. Yeah, that's cool, but people can't relate to that. So don't be afraid to get vulnerable. Um, utilize your stories on Facebook and Instagram. It is the biggest game changer in the world. I think back to before we had stories and I'm like, what did I do? I'm not sure. Um, and reach out to people that had viewed them just like she said. Um, and the last thing that I truly think is the most important is you need to have 100% unwavering faith and belief in the company that it can help them. Because if subconsciously you're thinking, oh, they're going to join and then they're just going to fizzle out and not make any money and everything's going to be terrible and I don't even know how to train them because I don't know what I'm doing. If you don't truly believe and have faith that this business can help them and change the, their lives, you're not going to enroll people because if you don't believe in it, they're not going to believe in it. So that's all I have to say about enrolling. It's really not as crazy or like intensely hard as you think it is. It's probably in your mind, um, which we'll get into mindset because mindset is like my favorite thing in the entire world. But um, people ask me all the time what my day looks like. And you guys, I used to ask like top leaders what their list was like every single day. And I found that everybody's list is the exact same thing. Okay. They're posting to their wall and their stories. They're growing their network. They're reaching out to people. They're interacting and they're doing self-development. That's the basics. There's no magic sauce. There's no secret. There's no certain thing that you're not doing that you don't know about. It's just the basic stuff, guys. You just have to do it. You just need to be consistent. So people always want to know, and I used to think, I want to know if you have ever thought about self-development and you're like, that's voodoo witchcraft. Like what the heck is all that? I want you to put like a number one in the comments. Cause that was me. I was like, why am I like going to journal and do like these weird affirmation things? And like, lie to myself, like, what is happening? I thought it was, literally, I told people, I was like, this is literal voodoo witchcraft. Like, what is self-development nonsense, okay? What it is, it's gonna change everything. <laughs> um, so, my self-development, I have a very specific way that I do it. Um, every morning, right when I wake up, I make my coffee, and then I come sit at my desk. I read, I have like a chronological Bible, where it's just like a Bible, section of the Bible every day. I do my devotions. Um, I read out my affirmations out loud. We'll get more into that in a second. Um, and then I journal out, which I will also get into in a second. Um, sometime during the day, usually I work out during the day. I didn't today, but during the day when I'm working out, I will have um, a training video on YouTube, probably from like Jade Hooper, Cheyenne Knox, Morgan Martin, any of those people. I use the app called Musi, M-U-S-I. I will show you it is this one right here. It allows you to listen to YouTube videos without having the YouTube app open. So it's the greatest thing ever. Um, and then at night, I just read one chapter from a book before I go to bed. And then I say my prayers and go to bed. Um, if you guys want, I can put during the Q&A session, I can put like a couple of my favorite books in the chat. Because I think if you want to progress in this business and you want to promote and you want to become a leader, you need to take the time to read, whether that is listening to an ebook or something, you need to read. That is where the gold is. Uh, the app is called Musi, M-U-S-I. Um, so people always ask me, like, what are tips on how to journal? What does that mean? Like, what do you write? Do you just, like, what is it? I thought it was so weird. Like, straight up, I thought journaling was the weirdest thing ever. Um, but how I describe it, and I wrote this out because I was like, don't mess this up because this is what's going to help people. Write an entry a day about your dream life. Do not write like, one day I will be rich. One day this will happen. I wish this would happen. I want, or like, I hope this will happen. Don't write any of that because you're writing from a point of you don't have it right now. So your subconscious is like, yep, yeah, cool, don't have it. Still don't have it. That's great. So None of that nonsense of like, one day, I hope, I wish, I whatever. Write it as if it's happening right now. Like, in the present, that is what's happening. 
and use so many details. Like imagine as if you were writing out a script for a movie that someone needed to make a movie off of. So like, what does it feel like? Um, is it warm outside? Do you hear birds? Like if you're talking about like your dream morning, is your room cold? Do you keep it cold? Do you like it warm? Do you have a fuzzy blanket? Is it like, what does your bed look like? Is your husband in there with you? Are you single? Whatever. Like get so into detail that someone could make a movie off of it. Not just like I woke up and it was great and I had coffee and life was wonderful. No, like I woke up slowly at 7.30 a.m., like, didn't even need my alarm. I rolled over, gave my fiancé a quick kiss, like, whatever. Like, hopped out, like, slipped out of my bed, like, appreciated how, like, cute my tuft did. Um, headboard is, like, clearly I've done this before. Yeah, basically writing this story. Like, it needs to be so in detail that by writing it, you will literally feel what it would feel like. So, your mind truly does control your life. And if you're, like... No, I don't think it does. It does. Like, I know it sounds weird. I know it sounds crazy, but have you ever had a day where like you wake up late and then you like wake up and you're all stressed out. And then all of a sudden, like, as you go to make your coffee, you spill your coffee. And then as you're walking to your car, like you drop your purse and everything falls out and you pick it up and then you get stuck in traffic and there's like three crazy accidents. And then you walk in and like you spill on your shirt and then your skirt rips and like 10 million things happen. If that, if you have ever had some sort of day like that, put it too in the comments because I've had way too many days like that. And what that is, is that is your mind starts out in a bad place and you're like, shoot, this was, my morning was bad. So then you're thinking about how you woke up late. So then this happens and you're thinking about how that happened. So then it's just like the snowball effect. Okay. So you need to figure out what your mind is doing to your life. What are you speaking over your life? What are you feeling? What is going on, okay? So stop thinking about your lack of something. And this is something that I just recently figured out. There's a book, I'll put it in the chat right now before I forget. It's called, Excuse Me, Your Life is Waiting. It's by Lynn something. I don't know who the author is, Lynn something. Um, and it is talking about so many times when we think we are positively thinking. Thinking about the future, like I want, so say you were a brand new distributor and you're thinking about how you want to be a Ruby, okay? You're thinking, I want to be Ruby so that I can pay my bills on time. I want to be Ruby so that I can have this. Subconsciously, thinking about that affirmation and that thought, you're telling yourself, I want this because I don't have this. So you're going to continually focus about the fact that you don't have the money. You can't pay your bills on time. You don't have X, Y, and Z. So you need to refocus your thoughts into a good way of thinking about it. So instead of, I want to be Ruby so I can pay my bills on time, think about when I promote to Ruby, I'm going to have such an amazing team and I have so much money that I won't even know what to do with it. So think about when you're having a thought about something, really try to figure out how that thought is making you feel. If that thought is like oh, stressing you out, that's a bad thought. So like for me, if you're, when I was working on promoting and I was like, gosh, I just want to be Emerald. So like this happens and it stressed me out. And I was like flabbergasted and it was just all bad. Nothing worked, but you need to get yourself into a good mindset. So try to figure out how your thoughts are making you feel. If you notice that it's putting you in a bad mindset, realize, okay, that thought is not what I want. I need to flip it around and re script it, figure out a new way to say it so that it gets me into a good feeling. So, um, in that book, there are like four steps to figuring out like how to work your thoughts so that they work for you. You're all automatically, you're going to try to figure out what you don't want. So if you're broke, you're like, I don't want to not be able to pay my bills anymore. I don't want to not be able to go to get ice cream if I want. I don't want to whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay. You know what your don't wants are. That is not hard to do. We all have the things that we don't want. So from those don't wants, we're going to figure out what it is you do want. And the most important thing is you need to feel how it'll feel to have those wants and work from that, okay? So figure out what you don't want, turn it into what you do want, feel what it's going to be like to have those wants, and then work and expect that to happen, okay? You're going to, this, you guys, I know this sounds crazy, okay? Like, I'm fully aware that I sound like a little weird person. And I don't even care. So 
when you get into this mindset that you switch it from your don't wants to your wants and you're feeling it and you're expecting and waiting for it to happen, you're going to get little nudges in your life. You're going to get little like ideas, little things are going to happen. Listen to that. That is your intuition. Your body knows what you're doing. You are being guided into what you want. Okay. So listen to that. Don't talk yourself out of it. Go for it. So you guys, you have what it takes, but thinking about what you want is not like, it's not enough. You need to feel it. So in that book, it's you guys, it's seriously so good. There are three different ways to get into like the feeling mode of what that is. So what I want you guys to do right now, this is just a little thing that I, when I read this in the book, I was like, Oh my God, that's crazy. So I want everyone to close your eyes and I can see you. So actually close your eyes. Um, <laughs> I want you to pretend that now if you hate roller coasters, I'm sorry, but do it anyways. So pretend you're at Six Flags. If you don't have Six Flags, like an amusement park of some sort, you're in line. You get into that, like the little bucket thing or like the seat. You put your seatbelt on. They come check you, and then they give the thumbs up, and you start going, okay? You're going up this hill, and all of a sudden, you're looking around. You're like, holy crap. I'm getting higher and higher and higher, and you get to the top of the hill. You're like, holy crap. It's about to happen, and then all of a sudden, you go. You fall down. Not fall, but like the thingy goes down, and all of a sudden, you're going so fast down. You have a feeling in your stomach of that drop, that feeling that you're like, holy crap, what is happening? That is the feeling of like excitement and butterflies and like good things happening. So you can open your eyes. That is a way that you can get yourself into like a good feeling that you're feeling something. So you can't hold on to that. You can't picture that you're like shooting down a roller coaster for like 20 minutes. It's not going to happen because that's not how long it takes, but you can use that to like jumpstart it. So then use that and take that feeling and then like turn it into something else. So then with that feeling, think about either gratitude or excitement or like happy or excited, whatever it is, and then put your want into that. So with that feeling, turn it into something else and then like slide your want in there. So look for, think about what you want. Um, something that really helps me that's really weird, but talk to yourself or talk to pretend you're having a conversation with someone explaining how it is and how it feels to have the want that you're talking about. So like, if you really want a new deck, but it's $25,000, and you're like, oh my god, like, I don't have $25,000. You're going to talk about, as if you're talking to a friend, like, oh my gosh, like, I know it was crazy, it was super expensive, but the money just came out of nowhere, and you guys, we love this deck. I go out, I have my coffee every morning, it's so nice, I hear the birds chirping. You tell a story about what it's like to have that want. And all of a sudden, you feel it, okay? The third way is kind of like the first thing about tricking your brain, but have you ever seen like a really cute laughing baby or like the cutest little, sweetest little puppy or kitten and you just like smile and you want to do like the really weird baby voice to them? Have that smile and like say something if you need to and you're going to have like that same little feeling, but do the same thing. Replace it with whatever other feeling you want, whether it's gratitude, enthusiasm, happiness, excitement, whatever, and put your want in there. So. One tip that I learned from that book, it was talking about how to switch your feelings from like a bad thing to a good thing. Like if you're in traffic, okay, and you're like, oh my God, I'm so freaking irritated and you just sit there and be so mad or whatever it is, whatever's happening, you need to find something good to appreciate about the situation, okay? It's not going to be easy always, but if you just find little things to be appreciative for, you're going to lose that bad feeling. It's just going to come down and down and down and down. So. If you're in traffic, you're stuck. Think about the fact that you're grateful that you even have a car, okay? That you're safe, that you're not in the accident, that it's ahead of you, whatever it is, find little things to be grateful for. Life will turn around. Um, a little tip that I wrote down because it just like hit me when I was doing my notes, but when you're working your business, if you have your list, you cannot, do not ever work from a point of I have to do this even though I don't want to, but I have to do it just because I have to. If you are doing something in a bad mindset of like, whatever, I'm going to send my messages just because I have to send 50 messages a day or whatever your number is. If you are working at that point and not like, gosh, I'm so excited. I'm going to send my messages and then all these people are going to answer. I'm going to have so many host posts up. I'm going to have all these potentials. If you're not in a happy, excited mood, nothing's going to come from it. Nothing's going to happen. It's just going to be junk. Okay. I promise. Um, I have a little tip about money and like a little task 
for you guys to do sometime this week. But if you're stressed about money, I want you to think about what is, like if I say money, does that stress you out? What does money make you feel like? Are you excited? Are you like, you're good, you're happy? Are you stressed? Are you worried? What is it? Because what you're feeling about money is why you are feeling that way. Does that make sense? If you are stressed and worried about money, you are always thinking about the lack of money. You're always thinking about the fact that you don't have enough. So you're gonna continually not have enough because that is what you're putting out in the world. I don't have enough money. So you're gonna continually get more money, like not enough of it, okay? What are you telling yourself about money? What did you grow up with with money? Did you grow up thinking, thinking of money as a source of fighting? Did you see money as a struggle? Did you see money as hard to come by? Did you see money as never being enough? Did you see, what did you grow up? What are your underlying beliefs about money? And you need to flip flop it, okay? script out your wants and like replace the old ones. If you're telling yourself like, nope, never have enough money, never have, never will, it's just life. That's not life, okay? It's not, that's not how it needs to be, but you need to fix your mindset. If you're always telling yourself that, it's never gonna change, you guys. Like you cannot work from that mindset. It's just, you cannot do it. So. Something, a little homework that you can do to kind of get yourself into a different mindset with money. Get a $100 bill from the bank. If you don't have $100, get a $20 bill, 50, whatever it is. Put it in your wallet and go to your nearest mall or wherever the heck you want to go. And look at all the different things that you could buy with that money that you want. Don't buy anything. But when you're looking at it, you're like, I have the money. I could buy this. I could if I wanted to. And then you can move on to the next thing. I could buy that. And your energy is gonna continually go to all these things that you could buy. Because you know that you have the money in your purse, you could buy that. So your, your energy is gonna go. So if, you're, if you don't know where your money's gonna go, you're never gonna get money. So if you're like, yeah, I want money so that like, I can just feel better. Oh, okay, what are you gonna do with the money? Are you gonna pay off bills? Are you gonna take your family on a vacation? Are you going to pay off your mom's house? Are you going to, what are you going to do? Where is the money going to go? So if you don't know and feel where your money is going to go, you're never going to get it. It's never going to come to you. I promise. It's one thing I can promise you. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is being consistent. It is the hardest yet the simplest thing to do. Okay. I don't know what training I was on, but it kind of like hit me like a sack of bricks, okay? We are not paid for our likes. We're not paid for our follows. We're not paid for our comments. We're not paid for any of that. We are paid for our enrollments. If you don't have enough enrollments, you're not consistent. You're not doing enough. Point blank. It's not that host post doesn't work. It's not that the business doesn't work. It's not that people don't want the products and it's not that no one wants to join your team. You are not doing enough. That is what the underlying issue is. If you don't have enough, you're not doing enough. Like she said, if you don't have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of potentials, that's on you. It's not that Francesca is this magical genie that just customers come to her. No, she puts the work in. If you don't have that, that's on you. You didn't do it. You didn't do the work for it. So commit to yourself six months at least, okay, of doing the things every single day in a positive mindset, no matter what. Don't do it if you're not in a positive mindset. Get into a positive mindset and then do it, okay? But commit to yourself six months. Take quitting off the table, okay? If you feel like quitting, succeed first and then decide if you want to quit. Don't quit when you're down. Get to the top and then be like, okay, now do I want to quit? Because if you quit before you get to the top, how do you know what you quit on? Why would you leave something that you don't know what it is? So who cares if it gets hard? Who cares if people quit? Because you guys, it's going to happen. If you have a normal nine to five job, people quit all the time. You don't see your boss being like, oh my God, my business is failing because my receptionist quit and now I have to find a new receptionist. No, let's find another one. Who cares? Why do you let it affect you so much that someone left? Why do you let it affect you that someone told you the business didn't work? You know what? People probably told Apple or whoever the heck they are that 
their business was stupid. Someone probably told Amazon that there was no point in having free two day shipping, but that doesn't stop me from buying something every single day. Who cares if it gets hard? Who cares if people tell you it's stupid? Who cares if people quit? Doesn't matter. Because the only thing that's going to stop you from what you want is if you stop yourself. Sally Sue quitting doesn't mean that you're failed, that you're going to fail. Okay. That's not what that means. That means that person was in your business for a season and they're gone and you're going to find a new one. It doesn't matter. Stop taking everything so personally because if you are so connected to, not that I don't want you to have a connection with your team because connecting with your team is the greatest thing in the world. But if you let someone quitting make you want to stop, you're not going to get anywhere, you guys, because I promise you the last person that left your team isn't going to be the last one. There's going to be another one and another one and another one and another one. I don't care. I'm here for the people that are on my team that want this business. I'm not going to ignore the ones that want the business because of the ones that left. It's not okay because your enroller or whoever you look up to your upline, they had people quit. And if they weren't helping you, you wouldn't know what you were doing. That's not fair. Don't give up on your people that are here because someone else left. It's not fair. Don't do it. Um, and you guys, if you quit the business, people that are watching, you're going to join someone else point blank. And you're going to see them. You know what? I am that person. My best friend, well, she's not my best friend anymore, but my best friend was in the business before. Never once asked me about it. She quit, but I saw her journey at first and I joined someone else. And because she didn't ask me, I was still watching her, but she didn't ask me. She missed out on having a double diamond and a future black diamond on her team because she quit. Because when I was ready, if she was still there, I would have joined her team, but she wasn't. She quit. So don't quit on your future. It's not worth it. Okay. I promise you guys, people are watching whether you think they're watching or not. I get people probably one to two messages every single day of someone ready to order the products or join the business that is either never liked, commented or anything, or has ignored the past six months of my follow-ups. It happens all the time. All the time. You guys, something I tell my team probably too much, but they probably hate this analogy, but I don't care. When you are driving down the highway, okay, and it's March, you see the little billboard to your right that shows that McDonald's Sharemark shakes are back. You see the first one and you're like, oh, they're back. That's cool. No one really knows that you saw it. And then you see it five, six, seven, eight times and you're like, you know what? Forget shopping. I need one of those stupid Sharemark shakes because I've seen it 10 million times. People need to see it a certain amount of times. It doesn't mean the first time that I wasn't interested. It just meant I didn't want it right then. But then I kept seeing it and I was like, forget it. I need it. Okay. Um, let's see if there's anything else I want to talk about. Not enough enrollments. Yeah, not enough enrollments talk to more people. Point blank. Point blank. That's all it is. If you want twice the amount of enrollments, talk to twice the amount of people. You want 10 times the amount of enrollments, talk to 10 times the amount of people. Know your numbers too. So one, that's the last thing I have to say about knowing your numbers. But like, if you know that you get one yes for every 20 no's, when you're looking at your, your 15 no's, you're like, all right, cool. I got to get five more no's and I'm going to get a yes. Then your no's don't bother you. But if you're like, gosh, I just really want someone to say yes to me. I just really want someone to do it. You're going to stress yourself out. So you have to know that the no's are coming. They're going to come. Not everyone says yes to me and Francesca. I just, it's not happening. I wish it did. It'd be great. But we get no's all the time. And you guys, the people that have succeeded, the people that are somewhere that you want to be, it's not that they have any secret sauce, that they have this crazy cool message or this anything wonderful. They've done more than you have and they've gotten rejected more than you have. That's all it is. Promise. Um, my homework for you guys is to really figure out what it is you want. And if you don't know what your why is, have a conversation with yourself and say like, okay, so your surface level one, what do you want? Money. And continually say, like, ask yourself why and why and why and why and why until it hits your gut and you're like, that's what it is. You'll know. Because I promise you, if your why is like, oh, I want money, you're not really emotionally connected to that. It's not going to do anything for you on the days you don't want to do anything. You need to know where you're going. You need to know why you are going there. So my homework 
for everyone. Or should we do questions for first before I do homework? Probably. Yeah. So I'm going to, you guys put your questions in the chat. So I'm going to go through and see if there's any questions we didn't get. I'm going to unmute you, Francesca. Let's see. I have a couple of questions from my team. What do we mean when we say colors? So there are four personality groups. We use colors in networks. Um, red, yellow, green, and blue. The basic way to explain them is red people are dominant and like winning. They'll just do whatever the heck it takes to win. Yellow people are loving and very kind, very family oriented, just very helpful all the time. Green people like details. They want to know how things work, why they work that way, numbers, that type of stuff. Blue is just life of the party. Let's just have a good time. Those are the four colors. Uh, the app is Musi, M-U-S-I. Yes, like your senses are awakened. You smell what the air smells like. You hear the sounds. You feel everything feels. Yes, a thousand percent. Um, I do not use a certain journal to prompt me. I just have um, the app called Good Notes on my iPad and it's right in there. Um, you can search on Pinterest. You can search like journal prompts and it can prompt you there too. Um, let's see. What about those that have a flip schedule? What do you mean by that flip schedule? I'm confused by it. I don't know what that means. Um, Francesca, one, something that a girl on my team asked me is like, do you have any basic things that you think, or like what would you say got you to Ruby Diamond and Double so quickly? Um, it was, I was just relentless. I mean, I feel like that's vague, but I mean, that's just a fact. Like, I did not stop every single day. Like, I barely slept. Like, I did not do really any sleeping in the first two months of my business. All I did was message people and message people and message people and message people. Going live has been huge for me. Um, I went live all the time. I did a lot of like live giveaways and stuff like that to like boost numbers on my videos so that I could like talk about the products, like all that kind of stuff. Um, and there was, there just wasn't any um, doubt in my mind that I was going to do it. And you know, when you talk about your mind really controlling everything, it's just so true because, you know, I've, I have days where I'm not as motivated as other days and it shows in, in my work, you know, it shows in the outcome of my work. Um, and, you know, I remember when I was trying to re-rank, um, I was like so close to re-ranking. I was like maybe 2000, um, volume away and I had like 24 hours and I had worked so hard and I was like I don't know how I'm going to do this but like this is happening and so I put on the secret and I have this notebook and every single month in the notebook I write my goals I write exactly how many little customers I want to sign how many DTs I want to sign like all my specific goals and I just kept writing on the sheet of paper like I'm double diamond, I'm double diamond, like over and over and over again. And I know it sounds like crazy. And like my husband found it one day and was like looking at him. He was like, what the heck is this? Like, what, why are you writing this? But I swear to God, I brought in that volume. I made it happen. And yeah. because I was like, there isn't any other option to me than getting this done. And the only reason that I haven't gone triple yet is because of my own inactions. And I'm, I can sit here and say that right now. I work really hard and I'm really good at what I do, but I could do more. Everyone could do more. And I'm not arrogant enough to sit here and say, I do everything possible all the time because that's just not the case. You know, like that's just not true. And so reminding ourselves, like, you know, I always tell my team, like, okay, like what level do you think that you're really operating at? Because if you were operating at a level 10, then you would be at a different point than you're at. And so being honest with yourself and actually recognizing what you're putting in and how much you're putting in is important. There's going to be times where life happens. Like I was in the hospital yesterday and I've been having a lot of health problems. I've been in and out of the hospital for six weeks and life happens and that has affected my business to some extent, but that doesn't mean that I'm not sitting here. That doesn't mean I'm not working. You know, if I'm sitting in a hospital, I can still use my phone. You know, you have to make choices in your life and decisions and the choice between watching the show on Netflix and watching a training video. You know, those are the type of the things that are going to help to change your mindset so that you can get to where you need to go ultimately. 
Um, so I think that with me going, with me promoting so quickly, you know, of course I can't just say it was all me. I had a team that was motivated too, um, who helped make it happen, but there, you know, I was also ignorance on fire. That's a term that, you know, is used a lot with my team is just like, I didn't think about the what ifs. I didn't think about the what if I don't, what if this, what if the other thing. I'm just like, I'm just doing it. I'm just enrolling. I'm just going for it. I'm just promoting. That was it. And it was only when I started to, only when I promoted to Double Diamond that I started to go, oh my God, what if blah, blah, blah. What if I don't promote to triple? What if that? And that's what really started to slow my business down and hurt my business because I just what if everything. Yeah. That's not going to help you. You can't do that to yourself. You yeah. have to be laser focused on what you want and stop thinking about what could or couldn't happen. Um, so yeah, that would, that would be my advice is, is your mindset is going to be the most important thing. Yeah. And you guys, I used to get so frustrated when I heard people say, like she said, like she, she just decided that it was going to happen. There was no if, ands or buts. She just knew it was going to happen when she had to bring in that 2000 volume. You guys, I used to get so mad when I would hear like you guys like literally mad when I would hear leaders talk about like, just make a decision and then you'll promote, just make that decision that you're going to make it happen. You guys, it's not a one-time decision. It's not like you're like, okay, great. I decide I'm going to promote and life is wonderful and it's just going to happen. No, you need to make that decision day in, day out over all the other things. You need to decide that you're going to work your business instead of watch the bachelorette. You're going to decide that you're going to do this instead of that. You're going to decide 10 million things over and over and over again because your business is worth it and your future is worth it. It's not a one-time decision. It's not a one-time thing. It is not a one thing. It's not one post that Francesca did that got her a $2,000 fast start check. It's the daily actions that happened day in, day out, no matter what, that got her to the point. It's not a one-time thing. This is not a one-time transaction. You need to be so consistent and do it every single day, whether you want to or not. If you don't know what you're doing, that's fine. Ask someone for help and just run. Like, stop thinking about all the things. Stop thinking about, what if Sally doesn't want it? What if I offend someone? What if this, is this, is this, is this, is this? Stop thinking about it. Stop thinking so hard. Just do the things. Do the things that we say to do and do it again. Just keep going and you'll get there. Um, okay, let's see. Any other book you feel like was a mindset game changer? Um, a couple of good books that I've read that I really, really love. Um, Go For No is really good. I'll put them in the chat as I write them. Go For No was really good. The Slight Edge. Um, The Circle Maker. Rhinoceros Success. You guys, I probably read three to four books a month, so I have a lot of books. Um, let me see if there's any more that I can see. I'm like, these are ones who are really good. I don't know. Um, let's see. How do you get people to see your posts when you sleep during the day? Um, like Catherine said, you are probably thinking, oh, I'm sleeping, so no one's looking at my post. Stop thinking that. People are still looking at your post, whether you think about it or not. Um, but also, like she said, there are people in other parts of the world that it is, when you're up, it's their go time. So that's not doesn't matter. Um, should I add random people on your social media to advertise to? Co biggest struggle is conversation starters. Do you have anything you want to say about that? Yes, you should. I <laughs> add so many random people. Everyone is random. Yeah. Literally 99% of my friends are random. In fact, I delete people I know. <laughs> like, not because I don't like them or I don't want them to see my post, but because like, I know them well enough to know that they'll just go ahead and follow me and I'm not, like, too worried about it. I want random people on my page. I want, because when you guys think about it, you know, we hear a lot, someone is interested in signing up, but I don't know enough people, uh, but too many people do it. There are literally millions and millions and millions and millions, and millions of people on social media. It really sucks we can only have 5,000 friends, but outside of that, I mean, I am constantly cycling through that, constantly cycling my friends list, constantly adding random people, give me all the random people. And I'm very shy. Like I may not seem like it, but I really am in real life. I am not like big on social settings or anything like that, which is why social media works so well for me. 
Um, and it is one of those things that you kind of just have to take the leap. The literal worst possible thing that's going to happen is that someone is going to tell you no and block you. And that happens to me literally all the time. And all I say is thank you because you just freed up a space on my friends list. Same. Bye. 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 <laughs> One more person I can add. Exactly. Yeah. So that, and it's, it's over a screen. Like who cares? Yeah. Are they paying your bills? No. Yeah. You know, I have, I'm paying my own bills. I'm doing my own thing. So if someone has a problem with it, I am so happy to delete them and I do not let them get me down. So yeah. that is the worst thing that's going to happen is that someone's going to be mean fine, block them, make space for someone that's going to be a positive energy on your page. And yep. after a while of me doing that, I rarely, rarely have that issue now because people know who I am. They know what I'm about. They know I'm a positive and kind person. And even if it, they're not interested in, they're still, you know, cool about it. And, you know, it kind of gets to the point where you just kind of get used to talking to people, but it's one of those things you just kind of got to take a dive into the pool. You got to get out of your comfort zone. Just like for me at first, host to post, even messaging for host to post was like, oh my God, but what if they think I'm cold messaging? What if they think, who cares? Doesn't matter what they think at all, you know? So I'm not going to let what Susan in Kansas, you know, thinks to keep me from my check. Like that's just not a thing that's going to happen. So if you're someone that has a hard time with that, the best advice I can give you is just like, take a dive into the pool and give it a try because once you start doing it, it's going to feel like second nature. Yeah. Literally people, you'll hear that all the time as you talk to potential. It's like, Oh, I don't know enough people. I say, you know what? That's really good. Like I get it. I've been there. That's what I thought too. But what I found is literally less than probably 10 people on my team. I knew before the business, I didn't know anyone that's customers or business or like, distributors on my team. I didn't know them before the business. So you have to be willing to find new people who, you know, right now doesn't matter. It's who you're willing to meet, what you're willing to do. Um, best advice for a yellow. Do you have anything that you would say like best advice for a yellow? I have a whole team of yellows. It's really funny. So I had my team do the personality quiz and like my entire team is yellow, which I find really funny. And it's actually very common for what I've heard for reds to have teams of yellows. And I'm really, okay. I'm glad you say that. Cause I feel like my whole team is yellow. So, yeah. okay. So, makes sense. Um, yeah. Yellows. I'm trying to remember. They're more like reds are like, go, go, go all the time yellows aren't so much they're not greens i'm trying to remember greens are more like they need like the details and like the data and like all that stuff um yellows i think are a little bit more passive um and so it's not that you need to be anything other than what you are my ambassador diamond upline barb hauser is a yellow and i love her to death and she's you know a top income earner and she's amazing so um Yellows, um, generally connection is really important for yellows. Uh, I'm actually second red and then second yellow. So, um, I would really focus on your connections with people if you're a yellow, because that's, what's really going to feed your heart and really going to keep you passionate about this business. Focus on the connections with your customers and your potentials, focus on that connection with your teams, do one-on-ones. Those types of things are really, really good for yellows. Um, where I think reds are just more like, I'm throwing this information at you. Let's go. Um, I think yellows are more kind of about that connection. So if you are a yellow, then, um, definitely try and connect on that one to one to one level. Um, and I think that'll help. Yeah. Something that I always tell people that I know are yellows. I'm like, I get like, if you're afraid to send out a message or you're afraid to add new people or any of this stuff, it's okay who you are is exactly who you need to be. You are a hundred percent enough. You don't need to be a red. You don't need to be a green. You don't need to be blue. You just need to be you. So the one thing I will tell you is if you are a yellow and you're afraid to do messages or grow your network or whatever it is, instead of wondering, well, I don't want to offend them. I don't want to hurt their feelings. Think of what you adding them or messaging them could do for their life. This business has done something for you in a positive way. So while you messaging them or adding them, you can bring positivity into their life too. So don't think of the messages or adding them as something that's bad because it's not. You're just trying to help other people. So that's what I would say for yellows. Any other questions?
So the last thing that I want to say, I want to give you guys homework because I feel like maybe in my past life I was a teacher. I like telling people what to do. It's just, it's just part of being a red. Okay. It's just, it is what it is. Um, I want you to write a letter to yourself. Okay. I want you to date it as if, so if your goal is to promote this month, I want you to date it August 1st. Okay. Whatever date you want something to happen, you're going to date the letter the day after. Okay. You're going to write a letter to yourself as if you just hit that promotion. Okay. Date it. And I want it to, again, to feel like a story. I want you to write it as if it was that day and you're writing it to yourself today. So it's August 1st and you're writing it to yourself of July 10th. Does that make sense of how I'm explaining it? Okay, cool. Um, so what does it feel like that you just hit your promotion? Where are you when you completed your promotion? What is the first thing you do? Who do you call? Who do you tell? What are you going to do? What are you going to do with your check? Now what? How do you like feel every little thing? Are you crying? Are you in disbelief? Are you running around? Are you just like, I just want to sleep? Like, what are you feeling and what are you doing? And write that to yourself. Um, and like I said, commit to six months. Commit to six months, you guys. It's not going to be, okay, I'll, I'll do this same effort for three, for three days and see what happens. No, you guys, someone you talk to today might not be ready until six months from now, but in six months from now when they do join, they can go diamond in a month like Francesca did. You never know who that person is or when they're going to join. So just don't, just don't quit. That's all I have to say. Um, is there anything else you want to give like one last tip, one last thing before we end the recording and end the zoom? Yeah. Just to kind of piggyback off what you said about the six months. Like what I always tell people is I take it in shorter increments and then restart each month and do it again. So I say for 30 days, I'm not taking a day off for 30 days. I'm not taking a day off. And then I'll literally write or I'll have a calendar and I'll mark every single day that I worked 30 days. And then the month will start over and I'll say for 30 days, I'm not going to take a day off. And that's what I'll tell my team. And I will literally be like, literally be like, okay, take a picture of your calendar, send it to me, show me that you're marking your days off and be honest with yourself that you're actually going to do it and kind of rinse repeat every single month. And that is really how I gained back what I had lost is because I literally am not kidding you guys. Like, I feel like sometimes people say this and it's like, yeah, okay, sure. I'm dead serious when I say that I did not take a day off for nine months when I came back into this business. I've taken a couple days off since then, but for nine months, I did not take a single day off. I worked every single day, whether it's for eight hours straight or for two hours, I worked at I worked something. There was no, my, you know, there, the door was never closed to my business. So make that commitment to yourself that you're going to do it. And, you know, it helps me to write it down and visually see it, but whatever that commitment looks like, if you're, if you're good with bigger commitments and saying six months, you know, great. But, um, for me saying 30 days is just easier to, in my brain, <laughs> and, you know, taking quitting off the table, just like you said, you know, quitting is not on the table, but I'm not taking days off. That's it. Point blank period. So that's what I do. That's what I tell my team to do. Um, and you know, hopefully that's, that can be helpful to you guys. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for getting on the zoom with me. I feel like it was amazing. I hope you guys, it helped you guys. It just lit my fire. I'm so ready to go. I'm excited for this month because I think big things are happening. I'm pumped up about this Just Celery product we just announced. I ordered two of them because I was afraid it was going to sell out. And then I just, so I ordered two. Um, you guys just take this excitement that you have right now and just run. Like, don't stop. Don't get lost in the sauce. Don't get lost in your brain. Like, just go. Don't think about it. Don't worry about it. Just do what you know to do. So I love you all. I will post this on YouTube tonight and we will talk soon. Bye. Bye.